In this video, we are going to review the essential steps for preparation and application of the ECG hextrode electrode, pod, and leads. We will focus on identifying the application site, proper prepping of the patient, application and placement of electrodes, connecting the lead to the pods and electrodes, and finally, checking for adequate ECG signal amplitude. Prior to monitoring ECG, ensure that all 3880 system components are sufficiently charged and communicating on a compatible wireless channel. Please review video one if additional preparation information is required. The ECG readings will be displayed in the green section of the patient monitor. Here, the user will see the heart rate, dynamic trends, the waveform, alarm limits, filter mode, lead view, and finally, scale. Step one, identifying the application site. Every patient's anatomy and MRI scanning requirements may be different. The goal is to find the location that maximizes the ECG signal to noise ratio. Finding a location that maximizes the detection of heart signal while minimizing the potential for detected blood flow and gradient artifact will optimize the ECG performance. Always assess the patient and MRI scanning requirements to determine the optimal placement strategy. The four imaginary lines shown provide the recommended initial MRI electrode application site, maximizing the ECG signal with reduced MRI noise potential. Patient supine face-up application. Draw an imaginary line across the bottom of the patient's heart, sometimes referred to as the breast line. Locate the bottom of the patient's rib cage near the seventh intercoastal rib and draw an imaginary line across the chest. Draw an imaginary anterior median line down the patient's sternum. And finally, locate the patient's anterior axillary line and draw an imaginary line. This is the area where electrodes will be applied. The Iretamed 3880 Monitor Systems ECG EPOD has a five lead system. Each lead has a color-coded bead on the wire, as well as a matching indicator on the lead's clamp for the user's convenience. To connect each lead to its corresponding port on the EPOD, simply line up the arrow on the lead wire to the V on the EPOD and insert until the lead wire is flush with the EPOD. The RA or R electrode site targets the intersection of the heart and interior median line. If anatomy permits, the ideal location is about 2.5 centimeters or one inch to the patient's left of the anterior median line, which minimizes any patient respiration artifact. Respiration motion can cause a variation in the QRS amplitude, which can be undesirable for certain MRI applications such as cardiac gating. The LA or L electrode site electrode is placed on the intersection of the heart and the anterior axillary line when the patient's anatomy permits. Avoid placing the electrode directly on top of dense breast tissue as this will cause an artifact for ECG signal. The RL or N electrode site targets the intersection of the anterior median line and patient's bottom rib. The LL or F electrode site targets the intersection of the anterior axillary line and the patient's bottom rib. The V or C electrode site's recommended placement is as close to the center of the application window as possible in MRI applications. The V or C lead can be alternatively placed in a traditional V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, or V6 location with certain patients. Step two, proper prepping of the patient. Once the user has identified the application site, the user will then shave any hair from their application site if needed. Hair can be very problematic for MRI applications as it can cause the ECG electrode to not adhere to the skin properly, which may potentially cause poor ECG signal and may increase the risk of RF heating. Refer to the five application sites identified in step one. First, abrade the skin with a four centimeter or half inch size amount of skin prep gel on a gauze pad. Do not use alcohol or any other substance that will remove the skin's oils as alcohol breaks down the conductive properties of the skin and will degrade ECG performance. The user will rub the gel assertively to the identified electrode sites. It is normal and a good success indicator for some skin types to turn pink as the surface of the skin is abraded. The user will then take a clean gauze pad and wipe off any excess skin prep gel from the patient's skin so the electrode will properly adhere. Step three, application and placement of electrodes. Apply the electrodes to the patient and ensure adhesion by firmly pressing around the perimeter of the electrode. Avoid pressing directly on the center of the electrode, which can cause the gel to leak under the pad, causing it not to stick to the skin. 
Only use wet gel electrodes designed for MRI applications that have a minimum contact diameter of at least 1.9 centimeters or 0.76 inches, such as a Radimed's hextrode. Part number 1812. Take note of which MRI coil is being used for the MRI exam, as well as the desired field of view. The user will route the ECG lead wires and pod to ensure that it is not in the field of view. Attach the lead wires to the electrodes by firmly squeezing the clamp and positioning it over the electrode contact stud before releasing. Keep the color indicator facing upward and route the cables away from the RF coil. Ensure the lead wires are as straight as possible and minimize the distance between each wire. Secure the lead wires by taping them to the patient's chest and be sure the lead wires are routed in a straight line if possible. Place the E-pod near the patient's abdomen or their left shoulder. If the E-pod is resting on the patient's skin, it is recommended to place a gauze pads or washcloth under it to avoid any wireless signal disruptions. For neonatal patients, first ensure the patient type has been switched to neonatal. Do not over abrade as neonatal skin is very sensitive. It is not required to separate the electrodes. And finally, place the hextrode on the center of the patient's body. Step four, checking for adequate ECG signal amplitude. While the patient is still outside of the MRI bore, observe the ECG signal on the IRATAMED 3080 display. The QRS complex should be roughly the same height as the signal quality indicator in the amplitude that is located on the right side of the waveform. This ensures minimum signal to noise ratio required for the gradient filters to operate. Performing a MRI exam with inadequate ECG signal will amplify gradient artifact and may cause the 3080's heart rate detector to be inaccurate. For more information, visit www.iratamed.com. For technical support, please call 407-677-8022.